Hello everybody, I'm Nora and I am super excited for today. I have been waiting to do this video for quite a while. The reason why I wanted to start this project is because my scraps are starting to overflow in my scrap bin. Here's my scrap bin. And these are specifically my flannel scraps. So I have a bin of flannel scraps and then a bin of cotton scraps. And as you know, there's nothing more in this world I love to do than to piece together my scraps to make different projects. And so today I'm gonna to piece together my flannel scraps. We're gonna make a pillow. Now typically I like to make pillow cases um, for like the couch and things like that that have the zipper so that you can stuff your pillow into the pillowcase and then you can change out your pillows depending on the season or the holiday. Really easy to store instead of storing, storing big gigantic pillows. However, I want to do this pillow in a specific shape and so this I am going to stuff. Um, this is going to be a heart pillow because we are coming up on Valentine's Day. I'd like to do a couple of them. I think I'm going to simultaneously do two or three of these pillows together and see how they come out. And I don't want it to be too small. I want it to be like a good size, real decorative pillow. My favorite part and where I'm going to start is sorting out the scraps. So I'm going to basically sort them into various piles of fabrics that I think would go well together for this heart pillow. And then whichever piles I feel I have the most of or seem to make most sense for this project, I'll go with those and then I'll put the rest of the scraps back into the bin and use them for another project. So I'm excited, as you can see. I can't wait to start, so let's go start right now. Here's some little owl scraps. So this will get caught in the seam allowance. It'll cut part of the owl's head off. Uh, same with this one. It'll kind of cut the top of the head off. I'll, I'll try this and see. I do think this is an awfully cute owl, though. These are the piles I have going so far. This is kind of like a purpley, pink, gray um, pile here. Then over here we have some more, kind of a pile of these bold prints. Um, this is always one of my favorites here. I love, I love this, I use this a lot. And polka dots and things of that nature. And this is a little bit more Valentine's Day. I started with the rose. And then this, I think, was in some sort of Christmas project, but I think that this goes really nicely with the rose. And this has the same feel, though it doesn't have the same colors. It has kind of this romantic um, pattern to it, I would consider. I started with this bird fabric. You actually can't see. The bird is gone. <laughs> you can only see the bottom of the bird. Here you can just see a little bit of the bird. But I think I have some bigger pieces, too. And I love this fabric. Here you can see the bird in full. Um, this I love because it has this beautiful green, this kind of sagey green and darker green with the uh, pop of purple or pink, with the pop of pink. Um, and then the rest of this hasn't really started coming together yet. I, I think this would be really fun. This is kind of a ninja, a ninja feel, but I'm not sure if these are really working together right now. And then this is just kind of a brown pile that nothing is, nothing is happening with that so far. Now it... <laughs> Now it looks like I just dumped my whole bin of fabric on to the table. But I promise these are piles, and I can see the piles, but you may not be able to see the piles. But I have my kind of pink, pink gray pile over here. Um, I have the rose pile here. I have the circus pile here. I have my ninja pile down here. And my bird green, blue, pink pile here. Um, and then I have a couple other little piles kind of scattered around. Now I need to decide which, which piles I'm gonna use. I am a little bit torn because the 
three pillows or three combinations of fabrics that I'm most interested in making are all very feminine and floral and bird-like and butterfly. And I really wanted to mix it up with some more gender neutral pillows. The fabric that I have that lean more towards gender neutral I either don't have enough to make a full pillow or I'm just really forcing it. Like for instance, I have this ninja fabric that I think is super cute and I have a lot of little scraps of this. And so I would love to use this with the combination of the black polka dot. Um, I also have a lot of the black polka dot. So I could do just these two fabrics together, but once I start adding other fabrics onto this, it just feels forced. Like here's kind of a blue plaid. I could start going in a brown way, or you know, I have this gray polka dot, which would go with the gray of the ninja fabric, but also the polka dots of the black, but it's not quite the right gray. You know you're always in trouble when you're trying to do a scrap project and then you start going to look for full pieces of fabric, which is what I started to do next. I was like, oh, I wonder what regular fabric I have that would match this. And so once I did that and I was looking through my regular fabric bin of like full yards, I was like, that's not supposed to be what this project is. Now, if I get to the point um, after I've put all my scraps together that I need a little extra fabric, then I think that's totally fine for me. And you can do whatever you want. So anyway, the point of this is saying that the ninja little pile was a little too not working together. Some of my other gender neutral piles were too small. And then the other really big pile I had of gender neutral fabrics was the kind of, I, I called it the circus fabrics. And I really love those together. And I think that would make a really fun pillow. However, I have just finished using those fabrics and I'm a little bit to the point with a lot of them that I kind of don't want to see them anymore. Uh, so I'm not going to do that one. So I am going to go with the three um, more kind of feminine fabric pillows and that's okay. I mean, whatever, right? Like we do the best we can. So the, fab the fabric piles that I'm going to use are kind of bird, the one that started with the birds and has the pinks and the grays, the rose pillow, which I think will be appropriate for Valentine's Day, blue, green, pink pile. So let's go get joyful and start piecing these together. What I'm working on now is the rose, some of the rose pieces. So they, I've ironed some of the ones that I showed you on the ironing board and now kind of around my table I've put them right sides together right around the mat wherever I'm gonna cut so this one I'm gonna cut let's see right along here and so I've lined these up and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim them with my rotary cutter and my ruler and then put them aside put them next to me over here right next to my sewing machine in a pile and then I'll just uh, chain piece them together so I'll show you how I do that but first let's cut them cut and then I'm going to put this next to my sewing machine and move on to my next one. Line my ruler up and trim. And I'm going to take my, my fabrics that have been paired up and I'm just going to start sewing. Now I'm at the end of this first piece, but I'm not going to cut it off. I'm just going to take my next piece and this is called chain piecing and it, it makes things go so much faster. And again, my next piece.
Now I'm going to cut all these pieces apart. And now I'll sew my seams, or now I will iron my seams open. It doesn't matter if you iron it to the left or the right. And the roses, these are kind of the highlight, I would say, the focal point of the pillow. So I want to start encircling these, encasing them in fabric. And I'll end up with a big piece of fabric for the front and a big piece of fabric for the back. And I'll want to make sure that there's some roses on both the front and the back. But I'm going to start encircling some of those. There's one over here. And so I'll want to put something on each side of the rows and then I can kind of build out from there. For me, I like starting with smaller pieces and putting them together to make bigger pieces. You can also start putting some of your two pieces together to make a four piece. So for example, I could put something like that or like that. I think I'll do that. That'll be pretty. I've cut all my sides to be straight lines, and now we're just going to chain piece these together. So I will bring these over to the ironing board and iron them open. However, I'm just gonna finger press them for a minute to give you a sense for this video of the process. We're just gonna keep doing exactly what we've been doing and attach it over here and you're just gonna keep going. I can attach, I don't wanna get too many. I really like these tiny pieces. I think that they are really cute and fun and playful. I don't wanna get too many, so, so at this point now that I have the four of these little pieces put together, I might want to take a bigger piece and attach it. I'm gonna do a little bit and then I'll check back with you. I've attached quite a few pieces onto this rose and I thought I would take a minute and show you how to completely encircle the rose. So I just started with the rose and then you keep building. You keep putting more pieces on and then trimming off the ends to make straight ends. The next piece I'll put on is this piece, this edge. Trim this off. So you'll see I'll be losing a little bit of the white and a little bit of the blue, that's okay. And then I'll press it open and I'll have my seam here. Then I'll take another piece, perhaps this piece. I'll put right sides together. Nice straight line, I'll trim a nice straight line with my rotary color cutter and ruler and then fold it over, right? And then I'll have this seam. So I'll have the seam here and here. You can see how this is starting to grow, but that everything is encased in really nice seams. And then you can keep going from there. So for example, I could cut a nice straight line here, fold it over, and I'd have another piece there. And you just keep going like that. Um, but before your pieces start to get too big, you want to cut out your template so that you know where you need to expand, uh, in what direction you want to expand on your existing pieces. I taped some printer paper together. I'm going to fold it in half and take my pencil and I'm just going to freehand a heart. So as you can see, I just, I just traced one half, one half of a heart. And then when I cut it out and open it up, it will be the full heart. And you wanna cut your heart about a half inch larger than how big you want your final pillow to be because you need to take into account seam allowance. All right, I'm happy with that, except I think my heart a little bit got kind of um, crunched on the edge. So I'm going to put a little extra paper on either side. Just tape it on, and then one to the other side. And fold it back in half, and then cut. And open it up. And that's much better. So now I can start putting some of my pieces onto the heart and seeing where I need to fill it in. So this is probably my largest piece here. This is also a pretty big piece, 
but I want to make sure to get a flower on each side. So, so these are my three main flowers. This one is a little cut off, so I'm not gonna include that one in my count. And so I'm going to say that one of these should be on each side. So I'm gonna put this one aside. I thought about it a little bit and this is what I'm gonna do. I have this green piece coming up along this side, comes down nicely here. And then this is nice and flat. So if I, if I put a piece right in this spot right here, then this can attach here in a straight line and I'll attach a piece right here and a piece right here. So a piece here, a piece here, and then I can attach these two together. I have pieced enough scraps together now to fully cover my template. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip this over so that the template's on top and then I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna put some weights on top. Now they do make actual pattern weights, weights that you put on top of patterns when you're sewing to cut things out more easily. And those are really worth investing in. I should have some. Uh, I do not have any, so I'm good, just gonna use these, a book and these washers. All right, now I'm just gonna cut all the way around. So this is the exciting part. This is like the big reveal. So let's see how the heart looks. I think that's looking pretty good. I am really happy with that. So I am particularly pleased with this, which is always nice to be pleased with a project you've been working on. Uh, some of the spots I really like are, I like uh, how these roses are kind of sprinkled throughout. I also love this really thin strip right here that's kind of bookended by these blue pieces, but I love these thin, thin strips. And then I really like this, um, this red triangle here. I like the little pieces. I have these pieces that I cut off the, back, uh, off the edge, and so now I'll be able to piece these together and use some of them for the other side. So these scraps become scraps for the next, the next piece of the project. Hello everybody, I'm back, it's the next morning, and I have had a little bit of a change of plans. I was just spreading out all of my materials. My husband was heading out to the grocery store and I said, look at this beautiful heart that I made. I'm, mating, I'm making it into a pillow. And he said, that is, that is a beautiful heart. Um, and then he looked a little surprised that I was making it into a pillow. And I said, well, what did you think I was gonna make it into? And he said, I thought you were gonna you know, applique it onto a quilt. He didn't use the term applique, he said, put it on a quilt. Um, and I said, no, but I started looking at it and I was like, oh my gosh, that would be so beautiful to have that be the center um, and highlight of a quilt. So I have my piece here I'm gonna show you. Uh, and I know you saw this just a minute ago, yesterday, but just a second ago for you. But I'm gonna show you again because I'm kind of seeing this heart in a whole new view. And I do still want to make the pillows. So I think I'm gonna start uh, putting some pieces together of the other two piles, because remember I was gonna make three pillows. So I'm gonna just put this one aside and then start making the other ones. Now, so I'm not going to take you through all the, the I'm not going to take you through the full process like I did yesterday of putting the pieces together and things like that because I think you have a good sense of how to do that. But I'll kind of, I'll touch base with you throughout the day so you can see the progress and see how things are coming together. And then I'll show you the finished pillow. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to put this um, heart onto the blanket yet, onto the quilt. Um, so that will not be part of this video, but I'll likely do another video and you can see what happens with, with this project. So I'm excited about that. I'm ex I love it when you think something's gonna be one thing and you think you're making a certain thing and then it turns out to be totally different. And it almost feels to me like the fabric is telling me what to do with it. It's like, no, 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 this is, this is not what I wanna be. I uh, recently had this experience with making a set of napkins. I had a friend drop off some of her scraps that she didn't need anymore, uh, or that she was just sharing with some of her quilting friends, and I was so thankful for these, these pieces of fabric. 
and I wanted to make her a set of napkins to thank her uh, for for the fabric. And so I quilted together these napkins and I made these napkins and then um, they didn't feel napkin-like. I didn't realize that you can't really quilt together napkins. The reason why you never see quilted napkins is because then they're not a napkin weight. They're like a placemat weight. And so I was like, oh gosh, I don't want to give her weird napkins that don't feel like napkins and aren't really usable in that way. And so I took the napkins and I made them into a bag. It was exactly what was supposed to happen with that fabric. That fabric was like, we don't want to be napkins, we want to be a bag. And so that's what's happening, I feel like, with this heart that I will lay down and I will show you. This heart does not want to be a pillow. This heart wants to be on a blanket. So that's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to put it on a blanket and then we'll go make some pillows with that that other fabric over there. So here's here's the heart. You can take a full look at it. And you can kind of picture this as the center of a quilt. I think it'll be cool. I thought I'd check in with you here because I have pieced together some of these scraps and I think it's looking pretty good. I am going to make one change uh, and that is these three blocks here were already pieced together in my scraps. They're from a quilt that I made for a niece. You can see the same ones over here. These were already pieced together. And this I really like. It's kind of tucked into this other section here. But this is just looking too square to me. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a line right down here. And then, so this will become two separate pieces. And then that won't, that won't be quite so um, so block like. The other thing that's going on is that I don't think that I have enough scraps of this particular pile to do both sides. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do this front side in this pile of fabric and then the back or the second side of the pillow in the other pile of fabric. So instead of having two separate pillows, I'll have one pillow and the front will kind of, one side will have kind of one feel and the other side will have another feel. So I'm gonna keep going and we'll check back in. So I did what I said, I cut this off here and I think the other piece, where's the other, oh, and then I, I somehow sewed it onto the other side here, I think through a strip. Not exactly sure how I did that, but I cut it off, put it over here, and so that's looking pretty good. I do like this piece quite a bit. And I thought this piece here, if I cut this off, I'll just fold it over to pretend I cut it, and then attached it here, that that might work nicely. Uh, I only have a couple more sections here. I have a tiny piece to put on at the bottom. That will be easy. And then I have a piece up in the corner here, and I'll just... I'll just connect that. I'll make this a straight line. So some of this will get trimmed and then I'll just connect something up top. I wanted to point out that as I get towards the edges, I try and use strips. I try and make the fabric a little bit thicker. Like over here, you'll see I have a strip, a strip. You know, these are, these are bigger pieces instead of these teeny tiny pieces. And that's because when you're putting right sides together, and sewing around the edge once you have the, the side one and side two, it's easier and cleaner to just sew right over fabric and sew, instead of sewing over seams. So I will certainly have to sew over seams, but I don't wanna have to start sewing two pieces of fabric together over some of this bulky material. And so it's not too bulky, but there are a lot of seams there. So I wanna just kind of let that be. Here is my pieced together heart. It does not look much like a heart right now, but it will. Just like last time, my template is underneath and I'm gonna flip the whole thing over. I'm just gonna make sure that the template is completely on top of the fabric. For instance, right here, it gets pretty close to the edge, but it will be fine. And then I'm going to get some weights. 
Also, like last time, I'm gonna cut around the entire heart. And now for the big reveal. And I think that's looking really good. I'm very happy with that. Hello everybody, it's a couple days later and I've been working on the heart pillow project, which has actually turned into, sorry, the sun is a little bit in my eyes over there. For those of you who know, I really dislike the sun. Uh, I prefer a cloudy day, but it's sunny, so I'm squinty. Um, but I have been working on the heart pillow. In addition, I have been working on a quilt topper, which will turn into a quilt, with the other heart that I had made, the, the heart with the roses on it, which was so pretty. And then I had decided to, instead of make that a pillow, to turn that into the quilt topper, which I think is gonna be really nice. I'm excited about that. It's very bright. That's better, I changed positions because that was just too bright over there, it was blinding me. In terms of the pillow, I have made a little bit more progress on the second side of that. As you remember, I had made the first side, then I was gonna use the scraps for the second side and I put some of those together, so I'll show you that and I'll show you the heart quilt topper. And, and I'm not gonna finish the quilt, the, the quilt with the heart on it in this video. I'm just gonna kind of show you the progress because I know that you all were with me when I started that project thinking that that was gonna be a pillow and then that changed course. So that I thought that would just be fun for you to see where I'm at in terms of that project changing direction. So let's go take a look at where I am with these projects. So here's the quilt topper so far. I was initially going to make it a baby blanket, but then I decided to just keep going. So it'll probably be a lap size quilt uh, for the couch or whatnot. And then I'm gonna keep going. So I think I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a strip of that red fabric there and then a strip of that plaid red fabric here. Now, both, the, both this green plaid and the red plaid, as you can see, are in the heart, which is kind of nice. The red plaid won't be as thick as you see there. The strip won't be that thick, but it'll just be a little bit of an accent just to frame out this heart a little bit. And I, you know I typically don't like to go and purchase fabric. Uh, however, that black and white fabric that the heart is laying on, I did go out and purchase that because I just didn't have enough fabric of anything that would work to put the heart on. I needed something that would, that it would kind of pop off the page. And I hand sewed the heart on. Let's see if you can see, I did a blanket stitch. You can see it here. And this is the first time I did it. So it's, it's a little messy. It's not as clean as I would like, but you can see in some places here, I did the blanket stitch twice if I felt like it wasn't very even. And then this kind of blended into this fabric and so I made sure to do this blanket stitch twice uh, so that it would really pop. They would have kind of this border of red. But the blanket st stitch goes all the way around. And I think it's really nice with that background fabric. B before I did the blanket stitch around, I got double-sided fusible interfacing. And so I fused the heart to the fabric and then I did my blanket stitch all the way around. So that's how I did that. So these two are not connected right now, but I'll connect those. And then before I connect these, what I'll probably do is I'll probably extend this piece up and extend this piece up and then I'll connect them together. And this bird might get lost and that's totally fine. Oh, it's already lost. It's already in that seam. That's okay. I have no problem with that because this is a scrappy, a scrappy project. I have finished the second side of the heart. I think it's looking pretty good. I'm very happy with how it came out. So this was supposed to be side two. And as you remember, I have side one over here. So I was gonna have side one and side two. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is make two separate pillows. So this will be the front of one pillow and that will be the front of another pillow. And I cut out two hearts over here for the back. So I just use the same template that I used to cut these out and cut out the two back pieces. And part of why I decided to do that is A, it will allow me to end up with more than one pillow. And B, if you notice, there's a lot of seams all along the edge here and on both of these. <clears throat> and so when you're, when you're sewing right sides together, 
to be constantly bumping over two sets of seams. It's gonna make the finished product less smooth and clean. And so if I'm really only sewing one set of bumps up against a nice edge, I think that will make my final product look better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put right sides together. So this is the right side and this is the wrong side in sewing terms. And this is the right side and wrong side. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put right sides together just like this. And I'm going to sew probably about a little more than a fourth inch, between a fourth and a half inch, all the way around. I'm gonna start on a, a flat piece. You wouldn't wanna start on a curve. And so this is a pretty much a straight line. I don't wanna to start too close to the edge, but I'll leave a opening. So I'll start sewing about here. I'll sew all the way around the edge and then end about here and then I'll flip it right side out. I've also put some pins in. I'm actually not a big fan of pinning typically. In this case, I am going to pin just to make sure that everything lines up, that there's no shifting, definitely on this point here. And this point is going to be the weakest part of this pillow. And so I'm gonna to wanna to make sure to do some extra stitches here. So when I get to this point, I'll probably do some back stitching. What I anticipate happening is that I'll sew all the way around in between a quarter inch and a half inch. And then I'll go either a tiny bit on the inside of that line or the tiny bit on the outside of that line. And so a second seam all the way around just to make sure that it's really stable because you wouldn't want this pillow coming apart. The other thing is that I cut my back heart to be the same exact size as my front heart. I would not recommend that. I would recommend cutting your back heart to be a tiny bit bigger than your front heart. And the reason for this is because if you, for example, cut out with a rotary cutter the size of the hearts that I made, 10 of those hearts, each one of the hearts is going to be a little bit different. So if you have your back heart a little bit bigger, you can just follow along your front heart and the back heart doesn't even matter. And then when you're done sewing before you turn it right side out, you just trim the back. Last thing is make sure to iron your um, all of your hearts before you pin them. I have my hearts sewn. I sewed two seams all the way around, just like we talked about. And now the last thing that I need to do before I flip it right side out is cut a tiny piece out of this point here. And we talked about how this is going to be the weakest part of the heart. The other thing is that this is also going to be where you get the bulk when you turn it right side out. When you get bulk like that, it just doesn't lie the way that it should and so it looks kind of funky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin this around and then right here, I'm not going to cut over my seams, but I'm going to cut kind of right up to the seams right there. And then I might make some cuts even kind of around it just like this, kind of snipping and then on the other side make some cuts. That way the fabric will just kind of spread out a little bit where it needs to. And then I will take an actual piece out of the fabric right at the tip. And be careful not to cut through your seams that you just sewed. I have a seam here that I'm cutting through, but that's just the seam of when I join the fabric together, but I'm not cutting through my two seams of joining the front and the back together. So before I snip my other one, I am gonna turn this right side out and just see how that's lying. So I flipped it right side out and I used a chopstick to kind of, on the inside, you stick it into this hole here and you kind of push around all the way around all the edges to make sure that they all are out and not bunched in there. And here's the second one. Uh, so I'm going to take this over to the ironing board, give it one last iron. I think these are looking so good. I wasn't quite sure how they would turn out once I flipped them right side out, but they're good. I like them. I'm very pleased. So the next step is to, uh, the next step is to stuff them. And <laughs> what I have realized once I went into my attic to get my stuffing, is I don't actually know if I have enough stuffing here. I have this like half bag, it's like barely a half bag. It's probably like a quarter bag. And then I have this like 
probably this bag is like 75% full. So I don't even have one full bag. And I think that these pillows are gonna need quite a bit of stuffing. So it's very likely that I will need to go make a run to get more stuffing, uh, but that's fine, I can do that. But let's just start stuffing them and see how far we get. You never know, maybe I'll have enough. So I just take a wad out, open up this hole and push it in there. But once you have a good amount in, you're gonna wanna use your stick and push it way up to these corners. I don't need to do that yet. I wanna get it a little fuller, but once it's full, you wanna make sure that it's stuffed all the way up here and all the way up there. And I have finished this quarter bag. That quarter bag barely filled it at all. So let's start on this next bag. So I think I jinxed myself when I said how much I liked how this project was coming along. I am not giving up hope. I have not finished stuffing this pillow, so it may look amazing when I'm done stuffing it. But I'm not really like loving how it's looking right now. It's fine. I mean, it's just, it doesn't, it looks kind of like a child made it. Um, I like this flat one much better. I mean, look how pretty this is. I almost feel like, this is how I'm feeling at this point. I feel like putting this onto the quilt or the other one, the rose one, is kind of the way to go. I really like this as a flat piece because once you start stuffing it, it just doesn't read as nicely. Um, but, but we'll see, it's not done yet, so let's keep going. So I finished, I finished that bag of stuffing, so I need to go get some more and I'll do that right now. I just thought I'd give you a little update here. So this is puckering a lot right in here. It seems to be the more I stuff it, the more it puckers, but maybe I need to get a little more stuffing around there. It's not looking great. I mean, you can see how it's all like, not really looking great around the edges. Maybe it needs to be fuller, but I feel the fuller I, make it, it just gets worse and worse. But I'm gonna go get more stuffing so that we can make a whole second one, a second ugly pillow. Uh, but I'll be back and then we'll keep going. So I got back from the store and I can tell you how much the batting, not batting, how much the, it's called fiber fill, how much the fiber fill cost. So this is 32 ounces and it was $16. I got it for 30% off. Unfortunately, this project has been a huge fail and I can only use this pillow for nothing else except to cry into because it's so depressing that I spent so much time on this and it is not good. Um, and it's okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But, uh, this is the pillow, but you can see along the edge, like do you see how it's bubbling up there? And I keep thinking, I keep thinking like, oh, if I just keep stuffing it more and more and more, that that will eventually even out. And that is not the case. It just keeps getting fatter and fatter and fatter. So there may very well be a way to make this kind of heart pillow that looks awesome. Part of me thinks that um, the quilting it part is what went array having the front be quilted because it seems like each one of these puckers happens right on a seam that's not true because there's no seam here and it's still puckering so i mean it's just a mystery to me i don't know why this is turning out so poorly but it doesn't seem to make a difference no matter how much i stuff it i mean you can see this is pretty fat this is a fat pillow and sometimes i think well maybe i stuffed it too much maybe that's why they're getting these seams but that doesn't really seem to make sense to me either so ah uh, it's a mystery, I don't know, but this is not good, this is bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, first of all, if for whatever reason you wanted to make this, which I think you would have to be a crazy person to wanna make this, but if for some reason you must have a pillow in the shape of a heart and you wanna make it yourself, uh, the last step of the process, I feel like I should finish the process with you. I'm not actually gonna finish this pillow because what I'm gonna do is use this pillow as a stuffing holder. So I'm just gonna have this pillow and whenever I need a little bit of stuffing for my other projects, I'll just pull the stuffing right out of the pillow. So I'm not gonna finish this. But if you did want to finish it, what you would do is you would put your little seams together like this, get a needle and thread, make a knot in your needle and thread, and do a invisible stitch. It's also called a ladder stitch. 
you can look it up, how to make an invisible stitch or a ladder stitch right around, along this little seam. They're very secure stitches and you can't see them at all. It'll look just like, just like the rest of your seams here. It will literally be invisible. So that's, that's what you would do to end this project. I can't imagine anybody's gonna be making this. I would not. Uh, if you must have a Valentine's Day or heart pillow of any kind, I would recommend putting a heart on a square piece of fabric and making a pillow cover, which will certainly be successful. Or I'll use this for something. I mean, I think this is very attractive. I love this piece here, this heart piece, but I'm so sad that this didn't work because I feel like I've put so much time into this. Luckily, I was primarily using scraps, so, you know, I didn't use a whole lot of yardage of fabric, but, when I got back from the fabric store, getting my, um, cause I had to get the filling refill. Uh, so when I got back from the store, I checked my mail and to add a little sunshine to my day because, well, I hate sunshine. I much prefer a cloudy day by far, but to add a little cloud to my sunshiny day, my new book showed up. It is called, it's upside down. My new book showed up. It's called The Secret Lives of Color. So anybody who's interested in crafting or art or inspiration, I have not read this. I cannot recommend it. Uh, I will read it and let you know how it is. So I saw an interview with the woman who wrote this. I don't know her at all. And so she's she's taken basically 75 color, colors that have stories that go along with them and told the stories in this book. So it's kind of broken up in a way where you can read a color story at a time. <clears throat> I'll give this a try. I'll let you know what I think, if it's good, if it's not, but at least I got some fun mail, right? My pillow may be crap, but I got some fun mail. So I'm gonna go make myself a cup of coffee, read some of my new book, and cry into my pillow. Hope you have a fantastic Valentine's Day, even if you don't have a heart pillow, right? Bye.